Right, we are now uh, at the stage in the program where people who have announced that they uh, have a lightning talk, it's time to uh, tighten the, I don't know, tighten the tie or whatever you need to do, because I'll be announcing you, hopefully. I, I don't know exactly where everyone is, but um, when I announce your name, you have one minute, and uh, right after we do these short announcements from uh, each, each, many of them are startups, there are some exceptions, then we're going to go for a break, and you've been very patient already. So uh, Martin uh, Abonitis from CEO of HealthJump, first up. Hi, I'm Martin Abonitis, I'm uh, from uh, Class 79, um, the CEO of HealthJump. What HealthJump does is it connects to medical records in any EHR, uh, from any in EHR, extracts medical records, aggregates the me medical records in a warehouse, and, uh, and then once we have that, we can do a few things. Uh, one of them is offer those records to the patient, so there we start looking like a patient portal, except that we can connect to records from anywhere rather than a single, single service. Um, then we, expose, we can expose the records to the, uh, to the health systems to provide analytics and to uh, provide quality of care me uh, metrics and enable uh, pay for performance models in, in healthcare. Um, and these records can also be used by any on um, um, many applications, Leah, for example, could easily use it to uh, get the drugs from, uh, to directly input the drugs that coming from, uh, from, uh, from the medical record. Um, so with that, uh, thank you. Next up is Dr. Ted uh, Ackworth from uh, the CEO of Artaic Health. So about 40 million Americans take five or more prescription medications every day. That's about 11% of Americans. Does anybody here take, well, maybe I won't make you say it, but a lot of Americans, a lot of people around the world take a lot of prescriptions every day. And that's grown, it's doubled in the last 10 years, and it's projected to keep growing. And it leads to what's called non-adherence. People are not able to keep up and keep track with taking the right meds at the right time. And it leads to errors and medical uh, problems, like uh, a death every 19 minutes in the United States. Uh, and a huge cost, like $300 billion worth of avoidable costs in American healthcare, all because people are unable to manage these complex polymed regimens. So Arteic Health, which, which uh, we're, we're actually launching this month, uh, has a solution for this. Uh, through the mail, uh, your doctor will have signed you up uh, the, for the prescriptions that your doctor wants you to take. Once a month in the mail, you'll get uh, all of your medications pre-sorted, pre-arranged by a robot that we've developed that runs in a pharmacy uh, and does mail order to 50 states. So now it's sort of think of like Amazon.com, but your doctor is shopping for you, and the right meds will be delivered to you pre-sorted, pre-arranged for you to take very simply breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, all, all pre-arranged. Uh, we're looking for more pilots. Uh, so if anybody works in healthcare, has a, a patient population who you think could benefit, I'd love to speak with you. And we're also looking at fundraising starting in Q1 of the coming year. Next up is Jasmina Aganovic from uh, AO Biome. Not here? Oh, there you are. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmina Aganovic and I run the consumer products division at a small biotech startup here called AOBiome. Uh, having consumer products uh, affiliated with anyone's role for a biotech or a pharma is a pretty rare thing. Uh, we focus on the skin microbiome. We're working with a type of bacteria that used to colonize human skin probably as recently as the last 50 to 70 years, but we've wiped it out because of our change in lifestyle and even more recently, our obsession with cleanliness and antibacterial everything. So how does this relate to the world of digital health? Not in a way that we expected. Uh, we started selling the product, and we were surprised to see how generous our users were with the information that they were sharing with us on their results and what they're observing. So right now, right between the pharma and the consumer side of the company, we are gathering data uh, through a platform that we've built uh, with the experience from our users on exactly what they're finding. And this is a variety of information that we're using to shape the direction of our clinical research for the pharmaceutical side. Thank you. Next up is Andrew Brownstein from ClinLogica. Hello, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my background is I have uh, several degrees from MIT. I have spent my entire life doing uh, healthcare 
uh, IT, uh, healthcare, uh, EMRs. Uh, ClinLogica uh, is a company I founded uh, two years ago, and what we're doing is clinical analytics, prescriptive analytics, in the long-term post-acute care space. Specifically, what we're trying to do is identify opportunities to improve patient outcomes by integrating evidence-based standards with the data that's in the EMRs and trying to find the gaps, things that aren't being done right, taking a look at meds that change over time, and really trying to find the risks of ways to improve outcomes using all the data that we already have. So, thank you. Next up is uh, Adrian Gropper uh, from uh, Patient Privacy Rights. Uh, hi, um, I'm Adrian Gropper. I'm CTO of uh, Patient Privacy Rights, uh, an MIT uh, and Harvard Medical School alum and a serial entrepreneur in medical device uh, for labs, imaging, health records, telemedicine, and most recently wearables. Uh, Patient Privacy Rights is a nonprofit that advocates for restoring the control we had of our private health information now being eroded by uh, unlimited digital networking and storage technology. My startup is called HIE of One, and it uses web standards and open source software to manage authorization for sharing information, of uh, personal information. HIE of One is about interoperability for the Internet of Things. The idea is that sovereign technology that we own or even build to manage the interfaces corporations use to share our personal information is uh, now possible. Open source software and interface standards uh, are the reason for this. What we need is more companies like Apple that want to compete on privacy and control. If, uh, if you're interested in differentiating yourself on uh, privacy and control as a basis for your uh, health service or wearable, please come and see me. Next is, uh, thank you. Next is uh, Zeb Kimmel from Atlas 5D. Steve. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. It's uh, uh, John Varanik, of course. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. I'm John Varsanik. I'm the CTO of Atlas 5D. We make uh, sensors that measure mobility in multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease that affects how you move, uh, including how you walk. So for multiple sclerosis, there's no good way to gauge the progression of your disease, uh, which makes it difficult for doctors to treat and frustrating for patients. Uh, a typical course of care currently consists of multiple trips to a doctor's office and brain scans. You can imagine how expensive and uncomfortable that can be. Um, people have tried wearables in this space, but they've ran into the barriers of data quality and patient participation. So our product, Echo 5D, is the first sensor that sits on a shelf in a patient's home and passively measures metrics about how they're moving, uh, requiring nothing special to wear or remember, and no photos or videos are ever taken. Uh, we're under contract with Biogen, the leader in multiple sclerosis, and performing a clinical study with a big local hospital. Uh, we're open to collaborations in therapeutic areas that are affecting mobility. Uh, I'm John. I'm the CTO of Atlas 5D. We're making a difference in the lives of patients with movement disorders. Uh, visit us at atlas5d.com or come talk to me at the break. Thank you. Next is Steve Lerner from Alpha Schenzer. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Steve Lerner. I'm the CEO and founder of Alpha Sensor, and as the name implies, it's a sensor company based on carbon nanotubes. My background is that of semiconductors. Alpha Sensor is leveraging that semiconductor infrastructure to deliver scalable, repeatable, and reliable sensors. Carbon nanotubes have been in the industry for 10 plus years, multiple research organizations understand their properties, um, high sensitivity, selectivity, ultra low power consumption, uh, nanoamps as opposed to uh, milliamps for things like MOS sensors, but you won't find them in your devices today. No watches, no phones can support this platform um, because they're not repeatable. We're qualified today in at least five major semiconductor manufacturing companies and can deliver from 100 to 100 million of these sensors in a matter of months. It's, uh, we feel, the breakout for carbon nanotube sensors uh, in life sciences. Thank you. And uh, I'll be around for the next hour or so. Next up is Kevin Liu from Hakuna. 
Hi, I'm Kevin. Um, I'm from Hakuna Health. Uh, we are a home care 2.0 company. Um, so right now, home care is very much like black box for a lot of people. Um, you don't know who was coming to your house. Um, you don't know what they did. Um, even after they left, you don't know exactly what they did with your loved ones. So we had to um, do things differently. So we give everyone an iPhone. So everyone working with us have an iPhone. They can document exactly what um, he or she did with um, your mom or your grandma. Um, and we have um, a lot of... Um, case management um, techniques built into it. So if it's a CHF client, um, if the client is wake go going up and um, it seems like um, something may be happening, uh, we send in their cell right away. So we are working with multiple payers um, to see how we can um, have our in-house utilization review right away as we move from a fee-for-service model to a fee-for-performance model. Thank you. Thank you. And next up now is Ned Sahin from BrainPower. How could Google Glass help people with autism? It turns out we don't know what autism is. I say that as a neuroscientist. But we know that people with autism struggle to make eye contact, know what other people are thinking or feeling, control their behaviors, and learn language. With Google Glass, we paint faces as cartoons and reward points for making eye contact and measure with the accelerometer when they do. We turn those faces into emoticons indicating emotion. We measure when they're performing behaviors and give a report as they learn to quell them. And we teach language from a first person point of view and conversational skills like how loudly you're speaking, close you're standing, and when to take turns. The company is BrainPower, brain-power.com. We're about to kickstart. We need your help. Brain-power.com. Thank you. So I don't know if you thought I was kidding when I said we collaborate very closely with other institutions. Here's someone who just walked across the river. Um, this is Dr. Anthony Samir, co-founder of A2 Medical. I guess I left my day clothes at home. Um, so hi, I'm Anthony Samir. Uh, together with, uh, I have an MD and an MPH, and um, I'm a diagnostic and interventional radiologist and an expert in imaging clinical trial methods. Uh, together with Manish Diani over there, who's an MD instructor at the MGH, Brian Anthony of IMS and Christian Prothman of IMS, we formed A2 Medical. Uh, the background is straightforward. Uh, medical ultrasound is nowadays quite cheap. It's quite low in cost. Uh, worldwide, if you look at the use of medical ultrasound in the aggregate, it's bigger than CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, and plain films combined, and that's just in medicine. But why do we only use ultrasound in medicine? It's non-toxic, and it's cheap. Why don't we use it in the home? Why don't primary care physicians use it? Why don't patients use it? So we build technologies to make medical ultrasound imaging easier to use for non-traditional, non-specialist operators, including nurses and patients. Thank you very much. Next up is Stephen Sofel from Benefit Science. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephen Sofel, president of Benefit Science. Uh, Dr. Bert Sumas and I founded the company in 2012. We essentially work with employers who are spending an incredible amount of money each year on their employee benefits using largely actuarial methods that have been in place for 30 years to design these benefit plans. So our firm receives transaction data from insurance companies. We evaluate that data, use predictive modeling, and then ultimately optimization. So if an employer tells us they have a $50 million budget, our software can run the calculations. We recently hit a trillion calculations in under six minutes for a large employer in Nashville, uh, where we designed the optimal set of benefits for them to offer their employees with this $50 million budget constraint. Uh, after that, we then can advise those employer, employees of the four plan options that their employer has given to them, which one makes the most sense, given their two or three year claims history that we have access to. So if you have a, an employer or you work for an employer, uh, there's roughly 15 to 20% of the money that they're spending and you're spending that's uh, excess and waste and can be removed uh, with the right uh, precision uh, review of the data. So I'd be glad to, to speak with you. Thank you. Just wanted to say that uh, if you are an MIT startup or a member company of ILP and you haven't gotten your minute, uh, come to me over the next few 
speeches, and you can have your minute if you talk to me first. Uh, Bruce Tidor, co-founder, but also professor at MIT uh, of uh, Peach IntelliHealth. Thank you. I'm Bruce Tidor, co-founder of Peach IntelliHealth. Uh, we're a machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, healthcare company. We're a group of uh, alumni from Harvard and MIT, uh, seasoned with real, wor real world experience, uh, 40s and up mostly, uh, trying, to, trying to change the world. The core idea at what we're working on is that predictive analytics can forecast adverse outcomes for patients hours to days in advance and by intervening, one can save lives, improve healthcare outcomes, and save money. We have two lines of products, one for inpatients managing their care in the hospital, and a parallel line for outpatients tracking their behavior and, and outcomes and trying to improve outcomes for them outside of the hospital. We're interested in working with uh, especially innovative healthcare companies uh, institutes, insurers, hospitals, and medical device companies and pharma who are interested in uh, improved healthcare outcomes and saving money. Next up is uh, Janie Tremlett from Vecna. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing after how many, 15 of these? <laughs> Um, we're probably a little bit on the uh, more mature side for companies. We have about 130 people. We've been around for uh, 15 plus years. I've been in healthcare technology for 25 plus years myself uh, and seen a lot of change. Um, our solutions uh, are called patient solutions. We're a patient self-service uh, company. We're uh, installed in uh, every location in the Veterans Administration, DOD, and many healthcare systems throughout the United States. And probably the easiest way to understand what we do is we sort of have followed the airline industry where patients can check in ahead of time online through their smartphone, tablet, whatever, and then when they get to the medical facility, they go through a very fast process. And we do also things like patient flow management and patient tracking throughout their experience. And our goal is to really create that consumer, I think somebody else mentioned the Amazon experience, and give us all uh, a little bit better access to care through using technology. Love to hear anybody thinking about these things and want to collaborate. Thank you very much. Next up is uh, Dennis Waldman from Barrett Productions. Thank you. So I'm Dennis Wallman from Barrett Productions, also an MIT alumni, aeronautics and astronautics, and electrical engineering. I love high tech, and I assume almost everybody here does love high tech. And uh, when I think uh, healthcare and high tech, I think of robotics, I think of uh, clinical, I think of diagnostics. But what I was introduced to an area a few years ago, and that was rehabilitation, which is still in the dark ages. And I'm gonna hold up the, the main product that's used in rehabilitation, which is the TheraBand. And believe it or not, they probably sell about $50 million a year of this. So let's say I added, added some technology to this and put a handle on this with some sensors. So now just instead of telling a patient just to push it, I know I say push it to 60 pounds force, and I actually could know how many times they pushed it. Now let's say I add some wireless technology to that handle, and I now integrate it with a mobile device. So now I know exactly how many times the patient did it. I could uh, measure, I could uh, evaluate, I could uh, see trends in what they're doing, and I could keep clinical data, and that's what the insurance companies are looking for. We've been building products for uh, Patterson Medical, which is the gorilla, it's about a half billion dollar company. Uh, we have a few products on the market, and these are the type of products that we've been building. Thank you. Next, next up is Michael Chen from Belletz Technologies. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Chen, co-founder of Bell as Technologies. Uh, the other co-founder on the brochure, Alan Joe, and uh, we both of us from MIT. And we, uh, we founded our startup last year. We developed a system, cloud-based system, combining uh, wearable and smart lighting to help old people. So we target the nursing home. We, first, what we do is 
we use uh, we put a sensor in the light bulb and then to mapping to map and position the nursing home and then we use we use a waistband to track the mo uh, the motion of the uh, elderly people and uh, then if they have a f uh, uh, if they have a fall then we can detect where they fall based on the waist uh, uh, based on the data from the waistband and then send to our cloud uh, connected light bulb and uh, also in addition to that we can send a reminder based on your location and based on the time so it's uh, and uh, we are looking for the collaboration with the uh, hospitals or the nursing nursing home to build our system there thank you Last up on my book here is Aaron Bianchi from White Tricity. And if I've forgotten someone that happens, please come to me right now. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. My name's Aaron. I'm a sales engineer at White Tricity, and I'm getting over a cold, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, our company does wireless power over distance. So what that means in uh, basic terms for the healthcare industry is any healthcare hardware can be charged wirelessly over distance. So you can imagine pushing a computerized cart up to a wall, powering it up, that cuts a cord that you'd have to bring into the OR, which is an avenue for infection. You could imagine implanting a subdermal uh, insulin chip or insulin pump, and when that thing runs out of battery power, it's useless. Well, you can now charge it through your skin. Same thing with a neurostimulator, or one of the companies we work with is Thoratec, and they do a whole heart pump that's actually charged wirelessly using our technology. So our basic business model is as a technology licensing company, and if you have a a uh, healthcare hardware application. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much. Those of you who, uh, who know me know that I like timing. We are exactly on time. That means you have 10 minutes to eat. You can also, of course, talk. So uh, please see that a, a new innovation that we have instituted is uh, name tags. I stole that from CIC. So whoever spoke today should have a name tag. Feel free to go over and bother them. That's what they signed up for. There's a little bit of food. There certainly is coffee. Ten minutes.